Darth Vader versus Thanos, two of the biggest villains ever. But how do they compare, scientifically speaking that is? In this video, I'm gonna compare the science behind five different aspects of this villainous pair. Hi there, I hope you're doing really well. I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel, you'll find videos about the science and engineering of superheroes, Star Wars, and lots of other topics. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ring the bell to get notifications on the latest videos. Right, let's get into Darth Vader versus Thanos. Darth Vader and Thanos are two of the biggest villains ever in cinema and there's lots of really cool science behind them and they also have a lot in common. Let's dive into five different things that they've got in common and the science behind these things. Right, first off, okay, this is a really obvious one. They're both aliens. First, let's take a look at Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader. Now, all of the Star Wars films and stories are set a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And the universe is filled with lots of galaxies. Current estimates suggest that there are more than two trillion galaxies in the universe. That's the same as more than two million million galaxies. And here's how we know that there are lots of galaxies out there. This is a Hubble deep field image showing a large number of galaxies taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. And some of the galaxies in this image are billions of light years away. That is a very large distance. That means if all of these galaxies contain billions of stars, there could be billions of planets in each of these galaxies. Which of course means that in the universe, there are billions and billions and billions of planets. It is conceivable that in that Hubble deep field image I just showed you, one of the galaxies could be the galaxy from Star Wars. But the chance of that being the case is really small. Now according to Star Wars fandom websites and the Star Wars mythology, Anakin Skywalker was born and raised on Tatooine, which is a planet on the outer rim of the galaxy featured in Star Wars. And what about Thanos? Yes, the mad titan Thanos. Where is he from? Well, Thanos the alien is known as the mad titan because he's from Titan. Thanos was first introduced by Marvel Comics in 1973, where it was mentioned that Thanos is from Titan, one of the moons of Saturn. And yes, that is actually a real moon. But in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Titan is some other alien planet located in another part of the Milky Way galaxy. Well, probably in the Milky Way galaxy. Second point is this, both Darth Vader and Thanos breathe oxygen. This might seem like a really weird thing to point out, but they're aliens, so you might think that their physiology or how their body works might be a little bit different to how human bodies work. But in fact, they both do breed oxygen. Right, how can we know that? In Avengers Infinity War, Tony Stark, Peter Parker, and Doctor Strange all travel to Titan to fight Thanos. Stark, Parker, and Doctor Strange, none of them are wearing spacesuits, even though the Mark 50 suit actually could be a spacesuit, and perhaps even the Iron Spider suit. But on Titan, Stark is not wearing the full Iron Man suit all of the time, and Parker is not wearing the full Spider Man suit, yet they're walking around on Titan, talking, breathing the air, and they're not complaining. That means that there is enough oxygen in the air on Titan. The cells in our bodies require oxygen, that is a fact. And our atmosphere contains roughly around 21% oxygen. If any atmosphere contains less than 19.5% oxygen, in the case of humans and our needs in terms of oxygen, that is seen as being oxygen deficient. In other words, breathing any air or atmosphere where the oxygen level is below 19.5% is deemed to be bad for the human body. If someone is breathing air that has just less than 19.5% oxygen, well that person would tire faster than they would normally if they were breathing air that contained 21% oxygen. But if the percentage of oxygen is very low, like something below 6%, 
that is something to be very worried about because if someone is breathing that air then they could have convulsions and can eventually lead to oxygen starvation or death. So it probably means that the air on Titan has more than 19.5% oxygen, which is good for Tony Stark, Peter Parker, Doctor Strange, Peter Quill, Drax the Destroyer, and Mantis, who all seem to breathe oxygen. And it's also good for Thanos and his species because they all lived on Titan. And if that's the case, then Thanos breeds oxygen. And what about Darth Vader or Anakin Skywalker? Well, Skywalker was born on Tatooine, a planet with a type one atmosphere. That's an atmosphere that contains the necessary gases, such as oxygen, for many alien species to be able to survive. And that would mean that Anakin Skywalker is breathing oxygen. Yes, number three, you wouldn't think this, but Darth Vader and Thanos both wear exoskeleton suits, but they wear them for different reasons. An exoskeleton suit is a suit that you wear outside your body that allows you to do something that you couldn't do without that particular suit. In the Marvel films, the most famous exoskeleton suit is probably the Iron Man suit developed by Tony Stark. In Avengers Endgame, the exoskeleton suit worn by Thanos is a passive suit. That means that it has no electronics. And to be honest, it just protects Thanos from damage. And it's kind of like a form of medieval armor. In Infinity War, Thanos gets rid of that armor pretty early because he starts collecting the Infinity Stones and decides that, well, you know what? I've got all these Infinity Stones. They'll protect me and I don't need to wear this armor anymore. On the other hand, the exoskeleton suit worn by Darth Vader is very important for Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader. It does more than just protect the wearer. In fact, it keeps Anakin Skywalker alive. First of all, the suit protects his badly burnt body from further damage. And secondly, it acts as a hyperbaric chamber that ensures that his lungs get enough air, which contains oxygen, which is very important, of course, for the biological cells in his body. Number four, and this is a big one, their main powers come from the universe. Thanos is naturally super strong and we see him dismantle the Hulk at the start of Avengers Infinity War. In that case, he didn't have to have his gauntlet filled with Infinity Stones. But Thanos' abilities in Infinity War are only enhanced when he starts to collect the Infinity Stones. And that's when we see him doing all these incredible things like taking on large groups of superheroes at the same time. And he could only achieve that thanks to the Infinity Stones. And the Infinity Stones were created by the Big Bang Singularity, as was explained by Wong in Avengers Infinity War. This means the Infinity Stones are an integral part of the universe. Darth Vader has access to the Force, a metaphysical power of the universe, which gives Darth Vader and other Jedi individuals their amazing powers. And some people like Anakin Skywalker or Yoda, for instance, can connect to this force to a greater extent than others. This just means that they're, well, better at harnessing the powers of the Jedi than other individuals who can also connect with the force. But I wonder if the force from Star Wars is similar to the speed force that the Flash uses for his super speed. Perhaps the speed force is a relative of the Jedi force, or maybe it's not at all. And finally, Darth Vader and Thanos have children who have prosthetic robotic parts. Darth Vader's son, Luke Skywalker, who is also a Jedi, has a prosthetic robotic right hand after Darth Vader chopped it off in The Empire Strikes Back. Mobius Bionics is a company that's aiming to develop an upper limb prosthetic for amputees that has very strong links to Star Wars. It's called the Luke Arm and consists of a shoulder joint, an elbow joint, a wrist, and a complete hand and fingers. It can be controlled using electrical signals generated by the muscles near the arm or by using control devices on the foot. Like Luke Skywalker, Thanos' daughter Nebula also has robotic parts. Over the years, Thanos has experimented on his daughter and as a result, she has a lot of robotic parts such as robotic limbs and even implants in her head. It goes without saying that the actions of Thanos in this case are highly unethical. Experimenting on people like that goes against all proper and acceptable scientific practice. And one last question that I haven't addressed is who is the most powerful? I've looked at the science that Darth Vader and Thanos have in common, 
But the question of who is the most powerful, well, to be honest, that's something I'm going to explore in a future video. But a question to you, what do you think is the most important scientific aspect of Darth Vader or Thanos? Please let me know in the comments below. Well, thanks for watching this video in relation to Darth Vader, Thanos, and the science behind these particular villains. Please stay tuned for more videos in relation to science, engineering, mathematics, Star Wars, and superheroes, and of course, other topics. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and until I see you next time, always think super.